Anyone who's ever had a pet pretty much knows that they are really good at communicating to you what it is that they want. They want to be fed, they want to play, they want you to go to bed. You can generally know what it is that your cat or your dog wants. And I notice that that's the thing about animals. They're just really clear about their desires. Their desires are pure. When my dog wants cheese, she just wants cheese. There's no qualms, and when she wants to play, she throws herself at me making little yodeling noises like rawr, rawr, rawr. and I know that it is time for me to get up and play with her. And she isn't really concerned about the fact that I am working and maybe I have a deadline to meet. That's not part of her particular package. Her package is she is ready to play now. She's bored. And if I have cheese, she's not really concerned whether I might want to eat the cheese myself. She wants cheese. It's just pure desire. Animals just want what they want. But I notice with people, it's not that simple. We want things, but we also know that there's always something that countervails that desire. I want ice cream, but I know the sugar's not really good for me. I want that pretty bowl in the store, but I also want less clutter in my house. I want to go away on vacation, but I don't really want to leave my dogs. I want to buy more yogurt, but I don't really want all that plastic packaging because I have too many yogurt containers already. I want to take a bath, but I'm in California and we just don't waste water. I want a hamburger, but I know the carbon cost of beef. Every desire has something that runs against it that makes me doubt myself, or choose otherwise, or choose but know that there's a cost to choosing. There's no such thing for me, and I think for any of us humans, as really a simple, pure desire. It's as if the knowledge of good and evil that we mythologically obtained in the Garden of Eden means that we are kicked out of paradise, separated from the non-human animals, in that our desires can no longer be pure, can no longer come without cost or thinking. We can't just rest in the thing that we want. Augustine of Hippo, St. Augustine famously wrote, Restless is the heart until it rests in thee. He was talking about God. He was talking about the notion that we are always conflicted and wanting and not wanting other than when we are resting in God. Which is a nice thought, but maybe not so helpful for the large percentage of Unitarian Universalists who don't really believe in God. The idea that we could come to rest in a God that we don't believe in isn't very much help. But it made me wonder if maybe you could reverse engineer God. If maybe you thought of God as whatever it is that fulfilled longing, that that might get you somewhere useful. What if the nature of God is to be whatever that thing is that your heart rests in? Where pure desire is purely fulfilled in a moment of holding and being held in that precious thing. 
for me, those moments might come in listening to or making music, might come in dancing, might come in a quiet morning with my dog's head resting on my shoulder just there. You might find that resting place of longing somewhere else, in the mountains, under a night sky, holding a baby, holding a lover. But there are moments when our longings come to rest and everything is for that moment and only for that moment complete. And maybe that's what God is, that experience of wholeness. Maybe whatever God is, that's how we know God is there. One of my very favorite hymns in the Gray Hymn Book goes, the lone wild bird in lofty flight is still with thee, nor leaves thy sight. And I am thine, I rest in thee. Great Spirit, come and rest in me. May Spirit come and rest in you. May you find places where you can rest in spirit, in the pure fulfillment of pure desire, held and holding and whole.